Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to take a look at the Hellenic Air Force video that was released this weekend with a little bit of controversy because some of the clips may be uh, of them dogfighting with the Turkish Air Force over the Aegean Sea. Uh, we've done breakdowns of that previously. Uh, a lot of angry people in the comments. Uh, not sure what's fake, what's real. Not that it's fake, but what's one incident versus another, what's put together. This is for sure a compilation video. I don't have any context on the specific incidents over the uh, Aegean Sea, but uh, people have already kind of started talking about it and, and pulled those specific clips out. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll do one playthrough reaction. Probably won't have any music because I think they use copyright music. So if you want to watch the whole thing, I'll leave the link in the description. Uh, but I'll react as we go and then we'll come back and try to break it down frame by frame. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, I'm mover. I uh, flew the F-16, uh, Block 30, Block 25, Block 42, uh, and then the F-18 A through D. Uh, and then I was a T-38A adversary pilot most recently. So uh, without further ado, let's take a look at the video. Okay, here I am at the bottom, trying this new setup. Uh, you can go check this out. I'll leave the link in the description. Let's play through one time, and then we'll come back and break it down um, frame by frame. It's amazing to me, all the squadron spaces look almost identical, no matter what country you're from. There's the mighty F-16. Great drone shots here of the cockpit. Uh, somebody knew what they were doing. Also probably got a lot of approval, but look at those beautiful jets. That's a good looking airplane. You always remember your first love. There we go. Taking off in burner, which is standard for a two bag configuration. Usually mill power if you're clean. Got the interrogator on top. Some night flying. So he's got a stinger light on. We'll talk about this in a second. I'm not sure if that's a Spitfire or a uh, hurricane. I'll tell you why I think it's probably a hurricane, but you guys can correct me. Which you will. I know you will. There's the first of the dogfight footage. We'll break this down. Um, obviously, they're in sim, so that would make sense no matter what. But you can see they're not pulling the trigger. So uh, very dramatic music. That is a beautiful shot. I wish I could find the full video of this because that's just, I mean, F-16 flying. And there you go. Uh, looks like he's with his wingman there. There you go. Guns track kill. Obviously not pulling the trigger, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Yeah. Love drones. Drone shots can make a video look awesome. But look at that. Very well done. Very cool video. And there you go. The uh, 336 Squadron. Okay. Let's uh, break this down um, a little bit better. All right. So the first thing, it seems like every squadron's the same. I mean, obviously, we're NATO partners, so why wouldn't it be very similar? But uh, just looks like a normal, average fighter squadron, just like anything I've seen in my career. Okay, looks like you've got heater. I think that's the uh, Iris T is what they uh, what they fly with. I know, and people have broken this down and said, yep, they've locked them up with that. But too bad configuration. Um, I don't know if that is captive carry. I can't see the stripe. No, that's a live missile. The upfront control of the Viper is awesome. I love it. It's great. Very convenient. I think the setup ergonomically on the Viper is a little bit better than what the Hornet had. Hornet guys would disagree. Okay, so these are live missiles because you see the yellow stripe. Um, I don't know if this is like their alert facility or what. You know, they're in a shelter, which probably carry over from the Cold War days. Uh, yeah, so two by two. Two AMRAM and then uh, two heaters with a two bag jet. And I don't see a targeting pod. Uh, 
Look at that shot. Just awesome. Yeah, nothing on the... Uh, so this is a training configuration. You see the blue stripe? That's an AIM-9 mic. With uh, the blue means it's inert, captive carry. No, it doesn't have a rocket. It's just for a seeker, so you can train with it. Um, so it's a little different than the previous one we saw. But, yeah, look at that. So that light, I mean, these are blocked 52s, I think, upgraded 52s. Uh, that light actually eventually became standard. And the Block 30 used to be the, the old lights on the landing gear. And eventually they upgraded them because uh, it wasn't that great because you had one landing, one taxi light. This became the standard. Just it's the little things. Yeah, take off and blower. So you got the family model uh, down there with the dorsal, the spine, uh, fuel tank, the conformal. And... Uh, two clean jets. This is just training. So this wouldn't be in, involved with anything, uh, any kind of alert scramble dogfight or anything like that. Cause there's, there's nothing on them. They're just rails except the one guy got a captive carry missile. Yeah. This is an alert jet. That's that must be their alert hanger. Nighttime ops. Always cool. So I looked at this when I first saw it, I was like, this is a spitfire. And then I did some digging, and the 336 started out as a Hawker Hurricane Squadron. So they are so similar, it's very hard to tell. So one of the experts in the comment section, because they did have Spitfires too and other squadrons, will have to tell me what this is, because um, I honestly don't know. Even looking, I, I just I can't tell. Nice. Loved it. Canopy comes down, you're ready to go to work. The jet was was great. The only thing that sucked is when the canopy came down and the guy before you was real short. So you're hitting your noggin on the canopy because the seat, uh, the generator wasn't online, so you could lower the seat yet. Okay, here is the first um, quote unquote dogfight. Um, you can see here he's in sim. Um, see, does the mouse work? Yes. So look at this pointer. That is uh, he's in sim, pulling about 1.1 g's. 163 knots, that's his bullseye position. They're 2,300 feet away. We're at 14,000 feet. Um, so, so this is whatever the heater is, whether it's the IRST or an AIM-9 uh, flavor. I'm going to turn the volume up now uh, to see if we can hear it. Yeah, so you got the growl, but it's not in cage. There's no solid tone. Um but he's clearly in an offensive position, whether it's a Turkish F-16 or his wingman. Um, I don't know. I don't know who that's supposed to be. But looks like he's doing some kind of tuck under jink, and which would tell me, I mean, you do a tuck under jink if you're defensive. So, But we've seen in the previous where we knew it was a Turkish F-16 that they didn't do any defensive maneuvers. So I don't know. This could just be training. Um, but... He's jinking, and now they stopped it before we moved to the next one. So the next one, we're 2,100 feet, 14,000 feet, much different, a much more offensive position. Uh, you see the bullseye positions changed. Yeah, 301 for 17. So whatever their, their reference point is, they're 17 miles away versus now they're 40 miles away. So this could be the Turkish one because they're farther away. But I don't know what their bullseye is. I mean, it just depends on what they're doing. One thing that does tell me it's possibly uh, live missiles and just them working with the, the Turkish Air Force is he's not going to pull the trigger. Um, now, the HUD might be cut off, but you're not getting what's called the bullets at target range. He's just putting the pipper on and calling that good, which if he did do that, I mean, we'll see. So... Here you go. He's going to end up with a valid track. What would happen here if he did squeeze the trigger and simulate? Um, right here where the circle is, so that's the death dot because he's got a good radar lock. That would turn into the batter, bullet to target range, and there would be little dots, little circles that would show where the bullets would be going projected uh that never happens in this video uh the aim nine is in cage though um 
that never happens. So it tells me probably doesn't pull the trigger. And then there would also be a little black witness mark up at the top of the HUD. It could be cut off. I mean, we could just not be seeing it. So, but as far as a valid track, you know, if this were like a student, I'd be like, man, you're doing a pretty good job. You're 2,100 feet, 150 knots. So, and above 10,000 feet. So that's good. V sub C is negative. So he's in a good control zone position. He's offensive. Pretty happy with this. If I'm his IP or flight lead debriefing him. And you can see right there. I mean, that's right on the canopy. So I'm not going to go count frames, but for sure it's, it's good. Let's see if we can hear it. No, they don't, they don't, they don't let us hear, uh, aim nine and, and they're not speaking English. I don't know what they're saying anywhere. Um, yeah, so GoPro footage. I'm not sure if it's related to that, but there's a, a, an aircraft, an F-16, probably as flight lead. Could be, you know, they got close enough to do that. If they got that close, though, with a wide angle lens, that means they're a lot closer. Uh, I wouldn't feel all very comfortable maneuvering like that because you're talking probably inside of 500 feet for the jet to be that big. Okay, this is just awesome. I don't know what else to say about this. Like, this is the epitome of flying the F-16. It's like you're on a magic carpet because you look at the unobstructed views, you know, here and here. Uh, it's granted, this is a bit of a fisheye lens. You usually, you know, aren't looking at your hands. So this is sitting farther back, but I mean, this is really, really cool. Uh, and for the DCS fans, I think this is the, what the F-16 and DCS is based off of the block 50. Or 52, I don't know. I know most of the stuff's off the Hellenic Air Force because that's where all the open source data is. But, yeah, check that out. You've got your um, stick and throttle, and it's like sitting in a lounge chair killing your enemies. It's awesome. Yeah, just like doing a little cloud surfing there. All right, so we're back here. We'll turn the volume up again. All right, so this, well, we didn't hear it. He didn't have it uncaged. He, it's also not locked to anything. So he's not, you know, you can lock the heater without locking the radar. He's got nothing locked to this person at this point. So let's go back a little bit. Uh, if, if I were to assess this, it would not be valid because when you have a no-lock shot, you've got the the funnel here, the EGS funnel, um, and you have to, you set the wingspan in the upfront control, so in this case, I think, what, 33 feet, if I remember right. So you'd have to match the wings a little bit inside to the aircraft, and you'd have to be in plane and range and lead for the bullet time of flight. He never actually gets in plane with him, so I don't think this will ever be a valid shot. But he doesn't hit the trigger, so it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah, so he never, he's in an offensive position. I don't know the range, probably another 2,000 foot. Uh, pass. He's pulling four G's, 267 knots. So, and this is also at 21,000 feet. So we're a lot higher again, looking at the bullseye position, one, three, five for 15. So this is more, um, like the first one where you're closer to whatever the reference point is. Again, the reference point could be anything. It doesn't have to be, you know, it's not home base or anything. It's just whatever they decided the bullseye would be at that time. But, okay. So this one right here, there's, we're in a, we're, we're three jets, right? So if I had to guess, which, I mean, that's really all we're doing anyway. Uh, this is the flight lead right here. And this is whoever they're maneuvering against. And the reason I say that is because this guy gets really close and overshoots, uh, which to me seems like he got jammed up against his flight lead. But I... Either that or his flight lead's defensive, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense if they're going to if they're using this video. I would say that's him and his flight lead, and then the other guy. Whether it's an adversary that's just being the bad guy and they're doing ACM, or it's the Turkish intercept, which is going to trigger the entire comment section again. Yeah, so they're kind of a roller there, and I think he thinks he's getting a little too jammed up on his flight lead, and he separates. So I don't think this is related. Again, this is another HUD video. So we look at it, 142 for 108. This is farther away. Again, we don't know. Random reference point. 247 knots. Uh, he's got 
1200 feet range to whatever he's locked to 247 knots 13,000 feet 1200 feet and then he's at 20 knots of closure there he is he's he's made this work and this is going to be a nice gunshot he's got negative 10 knots v sub c 266 knots or 12,000 feet 1200 foot range pretty good and then uh we'll see if he ever gets the You'd have to count frames. I don't know that he does. There he is right there. Oh, that's that's nice. Yeah. So what we go through now is like frame, 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 frame to try to count frames. Obviously, again, he never hits the trigger. So this conceivably would be they're using live missiles and they're messing with the Turkish Air Force or themselves. I mean, even if they're training, the thing is when you have live and you do these alternate missions where you're going to dogfight or intercepts or whatever, even if you're doing this in SIM, you don't want to pull the trigger or hit the pickle button. So there's no real way to know which one this is. I just know that he's not going to hit the pickle button, and rightfully so because that's unsafe. But very nice, uh, stable gunshot and track. Um, again, and this, I mean, you'd have to... So this is probably the most convincing, I'm Googling it right now, uh, that this would be a Turkish F-16. Because this looks a lot like, I mean, it, that's the markings. Whether the other footage wasn't, this is. I mean, you can see that's clearly the markings of the... Uh, the Turkish F-16 on their intercept. So uh, clearly not maneuvering though. Dude's just minding his own business. And there we go. We're back to the drone footage and uh, somebody went to the Jerry Bruckheimer school of the golden hour. Very good job. Very awesome. And that's it. So what did we learn? They made a very good video. All the footage in here is awesome the internet's going you know hey this is all f-16 it's very hard to tell this is f-16 turkish versus uh, the hellenic air force but if it is it makes sense because they're not hitting the pickle button pulling the trigger they're in sim that's stuff you would do uh, if you're doing an intercept and you had live missiles uh, alert scramble or something like that and you were just fighting but you didn't want to escalate hostilities or anything like that but you'd also do the same thing if you were in training with live missiles as well so with your own people. So not 100% sure on that, but that one uh, video, very clear, that was a Turkish F-16, but it's all spliced together. We don't, again, we don't have any context. So I don't know, just cool footage. Hopefully this was educational, informational. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think, which I know you will. Um, appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.